if you just want to get on with playing games on your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, and don't want to be spending your time fiddling around with emulator settings, just trying to get your games to work, then this video is for you. I'm about to take you through installing and setting up one of the easiest front ends for retro games. So let's get started. We're going to be using Lemuroid as the front end and launcher for our games. So go into the Google Play Store and search for Lemuroid. Then click on the install button. Once it is installed onto your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, click on the icon to start it up. It's then going to ask where your ROMs directory is. I keep all my ROMs and BIOS files on my microSD card. However, when I click to show the drives, you'll notice that the microSD card isn't showing. And the reason for that is that I haven't yet set it up as portal storage on the Retroid. This is quickly and easily fixed by pulling down the notifications and tapping on the notification which says checking SD card, then tapping on the setup option. As I've said I want this to be used as portable storage, I'm going to scroll down and select that. And now when I go to select the micro SD card, it is showing up as an option. And obviously I'm going to select that. I have my BIOSes in a folder under Retro Games and I have a separate folder under Retro Games for the games themselves. So all I need to do is select the top level Retro Games directory and Lemuroid will be able to see the BIOS folders and all the ROMs folders inside of that. And as you can see, one of the first things it is picked up on is some of the BIOS files. The length of time the scanning process will take will depend on how much you have for it to scan. I've got quite a bit, so I'm going to leave it to do its thing and come back to it when it's finished. Once Lemuroid has finished scanning, click on the icon that looks like a controller and this will show you the systems that it has found. Scrolling down you can see the systems it's found, and looking at the NES you can see that it is only showing one game. And I know I have hundreds of ROMs for the NES on my microSD card, so clearly there is a problem here. And it's a similar story for a couple of other systems, such as the Atari 2600 and also the Sega Master System. Each of these should be showing a substantial number of ROMs. Going back to the Play Store and looking at the page for Lemuroid, it shows you the systems it supports. So it's unreasonable to expect it to pick up all the systems that I have ROMs for on the card, as it doesn't support a lot of them. I can live with that. But what about it not picking up the ROMs for the systems that it does support, such as the NES? For the answer to that, we need to look at the GitHub page for Lemuroid, and in particular the section which says, how does Lemuroid recognize my files? I'll leave a link to this page in the description for this video. Basically, you can use zip files, but not 7-zip files. So that is what messed up my NES scan. It's just a case of unzipping the 7-zip files and scanning again. The easiest way to get a successful scan is just to pay attention to points 4 and 5 and avoid 7-zip files. It's incredibly easy to do once you know about it. Now, one important change you definitely need to make when using Lemuroid on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus is to change the way the in-game menu is activated. This is the menu you bring up when you want to quit out of a game or load or save states, but unfortunately the default way of activating this menu is by pressing L3 and R3, and of course that's not going to work on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus because it doesn't have L3 or R3. But it is very easy to change. All you need to do is go into the main settings for Lemuroid and scroll down to the external devices and select that. It tells you the controller that it is configuring, and if you wanted to swap your A and B buttons around or change anything else, then this is the place to do it. I'm going to leave everything as it is and instead scroll down until I get to the menu option, which you can see is configured as L3 and R3. All I need to do is select that and then choose select plus start as my preferred button combo for bringing up the in-game menu. And that's it. That's really all there is to setting up and configuring Lemuroid on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. If you'd like to see some gameplay using Lemuroid, which systems work great, which ones have a few problems, and the changes I recommend you make to get those systems running smoothly, then click on the Lemuroid video I have linked on the screen right now. And if you weren't impressed by Lemuroid, 
personally I think it's great, then I have another option for you to try out, which is also linked on the screen right now. So take your pick.